Is your life out of control? Are you tired and worn out from so many bad decisions and choices? Do you want to learn how to make some wise choices and learn how to make them instinctively, step by step, and in a way that's actually going to be life changing for you? You do it without even thinking. I'm going to share that with you and so much more in today's episode of Going Deeper. So, welcome to the show. Welcome to today's episode of Going Deeper with John Morris. Join the show that tackles the topics that many around the world struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. From mental and physical health, to emotional and spiritual well-being. But that's not all. John also shares his teaching on more focused topics, such as anxiety, self-image, gaining employment, the importance of educating oneself, developing a deeper spiritual connection, mental and physical well-being, and so much more. Want to be the best you can be? You're in the right place. And now please welcome Mind, Body and Soul's very own John Morris. Well, hey folks, and welcome to another exciting episode of Going Deeper. I am your host, John Morris, and welcome to the show that's designed to get you from where you are to where you want to be simply, effectively, and hopefully in a way that you enjoy as well. As always, don't forget that I never share a topic or a subject that I have not personally had experience in myself. And with that in mind, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend, because it could be the very thing that helps them in their time of struggle. So now we've got that out of the way, let's talk about making wise choices, shall we? It used to be that people would actually go to school um, and college and universities around the world to learn how to think, to learn how to develop their mind, to how to make wise choices. This seems to be something now that's whittling out and people seem to be more reactionary and less conscious of what's going on. We did a, a survey actually recently that the amount of people that just seem to go from A to B to B to C to C to D um, without given it any thought at all which means that they're basically just reacting to everything almost like a programmed robot as opposed to making a conscious decision a conscious choice of everything that's going along now this is something this it's really fascinating when you look at this from a psychological point of view I love it um, and it's really really important but that's a topic for another time so making wise choices. We covered this a little bit in, in last week's episode when we're talking about setting boundaries and making sure of, of staying away from vampires, energy vampires, and soul suckers. But for yourself, I want you to explore a little bit in terms of you. This is sort of part two, um, I suppose, of last week's show. You know, are you making wise choices? Are you, for example, for example, okay, before we begin again, let's set a definition. What does it mean to make a wise choice? A wise choice, by my definition, is a decision and a choice that's conscious that you make that's going to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. That's by my definition. You may have your own. That's fine. But by my definition, a wise choice is something that's going to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. Now, that could be in business. That could be in your relationships. That could be in a goal that you've got. It could be with your finances. It could be with your children. It could be with your passions. It could be with your hobbies. It could be writing a book. Whatever it might be. If you are making decisions, for example, that are against what you want to do, then that isn't making a wise choice. If you, for example, I'm just going to pick up someone, um, you know, if you are someone that wants to be faithful and, and, and monogamous in your uh, relationships and you want to go off sleeping with 15 or 16 other people in a week, then um, that, that isn't a wise choice. Um, if you are someone of high standing, for example, and you're trying to build a career for yourself, then doing the same is not something I would recommend. And we've seen presidents do this, obviously, before where they have made those decisions and said, yep, I'm standing for this and I'm standing for that. And then they went and did completely the opposite of what they had verbally said. I'd rather someone come out and say, you know, well, I'm standing for this and I'm standing for that and actually go ahead and do it. You know, at least then, you know, you'd have a president, a prime minister that told you what they were going to do, rightly or wrongly, and at least you could believe them uh, because at least they backed it up, they said what they're going to do, even if it was a small thing. Anyway, I digress. So making a wise choice means having an awareness in yourself of what's going to take you from where you are to where you want to be and it's really important to do that so if it's really really important why do more people seem not to make wise choices why have we got an all-time record low of people who are making decisions that are going to benefit them essentially they're doing things that don't 
that, that don't have any merit. They're doing things that aren't leading them from where they are to where they want to be. Why is this? Again, it goes back to what I was saying before, that people are reactionary. A lot of the time, if you've heard the last couple of shows, we've talked about this, people would almost rather die or do anything other than think their way out of a problem or a situation or think to create. Now, think to create means, as a, you know, from an artistic point of view, it literally means visualizing in here what I want to see out here, out in the world, out in the real world. This is where it all begins. So when you start thinking to create, you can start to say, okay, how can I make wise decisions? So for example, I'm writing books at the moment. I've, I've got uh, three books that I'm working on at the moment. Um, one, self-help, one, my first work of fiction, and, uh, and one is actually how to build a successful art business. The book, I've finally gotten around to writing it. So, I'm writing all these things. My wise choice is, is then to sit down and say, okay, I need to make a list of all of these things that I have in my mind, floating around in my mind. You have 60,000 thoughts every single day and you can pull from any single one of them, okay? So in any given day, I will work on several different things. It could be a painting, it could be a life coaching session, it could be books, it could be, you know, whatever it might be. And I'm making those wise decisions to take me from where I am to where I want to be. I want to help artists to build a successful art business. Why? Because I have done it. And I still do it to this day. I, and it's not a step by step, you know, oh, I figured out the mystery secret. It's I know how to build a business. I know how to engage with people. I know how to build relationships with people. I know how to network and how to talk. I know how to, you know, get into those various income streams. I know how to create multiple products. I did this over a 20 year period, so that's what I wanted to do. So then, okay, so my wise decision was, okay, I need to sit down and I need to plan in time when I'm going to write this book. And I do the same with the other things and I do the same with painting, I do the same with coaching, I do the same with anything else. I make a plan and that is the step one, is that you have to make a plan of what it is that you want to do. You, you've got to make a plan of that wise choice. And then in your plan, you need to figure out when it is that you're going to do it. So there's step two. So step one is to make a plan. Step two is to figure out when you're going to do it. So giving yourself a deadline. And step three is making sure that you set alarms. You, you do whatever you need to do in order to make this a reality. If it's something that's a worthwhile goal, you're really serious about, you're really passionate about, you'll get it done. You'll get it done. And it may seem a little bit overwhelming, just start it step by step and bit by bit. And then you've got to say to yourself, okay, for, for a wise decision and a wise choice, if I'm going into to the office, for example, to, to work on my book, and I decide, no, I'm actually going to, you know, and I get, I get to the bottom of the stairs and I'm going to turn right to go into the office, or I'm going to turn left to go into the living room with the big TV and all that kind of stuff, and I turn left. Well, that isn't a wise choice because that doesn't help me get from where I am to where I want to be. It doesn't help me achieve my goal. So it's really important then that you discipline yourself and say, no, this is my time. This is my writing time. And again, if you're passionate and you enjoy it, then go and do it. Another thing to be aware of with wise choices is this. Do not develop magpie syndrome. Okay, write that down. Magpie syndrome. Magpie syndrome is basically where we see shiny object after shiny object and what tends to happen is you know you'll get an idea for a book and you start working on it and then you get another idea for a book and then you start working it and then you get an idea for a book that's nothing to do with your niche or your market and you start working on that then you get another idea for maybe a self-help book you can tell I've been here and you start working on that so now you're working on four three or four books all at once and that's how you can feel overwhelmed. And then you remember, oh, I'd like to do that painting. Oh, I'd like to do this. Oh, I'd like to do it. Now, you can do these things, but you need to put it in a list format, okay? And then you need to schedule in when and how you're going to do it. Because if you don't do this, you will end up overwhelmed, you will end up not producing your best work, and you'll end up getting frustrated and resenting what it is that you're doing.
I know, I've been there. The amount of times I've sat there in front of a computer and I'm like, oh my goodness, I actually speak my books into being. So for example, if someone said to me, you know, okay, you're writing this book now, how to build a successful art business, how are you doing it? I have, a, I have a, um, my, my phone and I have an app that is a voice to text app. And I literally sit there and I, I narrate everything because sometimes, you know, my brain doesn't work the same way as, as everybody else's and, um, you know, typing sometimes might be fine, but I'm verbally, um, so I read with my ears through audiobooks and I, and I think with my mouth. Um, you know, like I say, it's, it's kind of backwards, but I've got ideas for books here, there and everywhere, but I list them out and then I will get to them at a specific point in time rather than trying to do it all at once. So. To wrap up today's show, hopefully this has really, really helped you to make wise choices and decisions. You're going to figure out, is the decision and the choice that you're about to take helping you get from where you are to where you want to be? If it is, great. If it isn't, change it. Second, you got to develop a plan. You've got to make a list, okay, of all these ideas. You've got 60,000 in a day. You're going to find ideas, maybe 25 of them, that you'd be like, wow, this is amazing. This is awesome. Um, list them out because it'll stop you from getting overwhelmed. And thirdly, schedule in the time when you are going to write, when you are going to do whatever that activity might be. It might be paint, it might be speak, it might be play music, whatever it might be. And when you do these things, again, it's the least of disciplines. When you capture the least of disciplines and you build upon them, it starts building in all your other areas of life as well. And it doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes, I actually, the other day, I don't know, I don't know if we caught this on video, but I managed to get 25 things done off my to-do list in a single day. And some of those are really big, like being in the gym, doing a, a virtual conference, um, coaching, doing our teen life coaching, um, gosh, painting. There was lots of painting the door, actually, at one point. You know, there was a lot of things that were there and we managed to take off all 25. I felt great. I felt really tired the day after, but I felt really, really great and it built up my momentum and it will do the same for you. So I hope that really, really helps you guys. If it does, let me know in the comments section below. As always, if you're interested in coaching, get in touch with us at patreon.com forward slash mind, body and soul. You can get in touch with us at battlesweallface.com as well to check out Katie's self-help block to check out my books, to check out all of our products and courses and things that you're going to love that are designed specifically to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. And if, if there's anything I can do to help, just drop me a message. Don't forget, as always, to like, share and subscribe. Tell your friends because it could be the very thing that they need to hear in the time of their struggle. And aside from that, have a phenomenal week, guys. Take care. God bless. I'll see you same time, same place next week for Going Deeper. Take care. Do you, your son or daughter, struggle with direction, clarity and purpose? Maybe you struggle with anxiety. Maybe you struggle with self-esteem or confidence issues. Maybe you've got great ideas, but you've no idea how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't worry, you're not alone. People around the world struggle with these issues. Hi there, I'm John Morris. I'm the coach of the creative mind and I'm also a psychologist in training. For the last two decades, I've worked with people from all walks of life and all over the world, all with a wide variety of issues. I've worked with people from youth groups to adult education to people dealing with day-to-day -day living issues. And each one of them has an amazing story to tell and we've helped them get clear as to where they are and clear as to where they want to be. And I want to help you too. Like a lot of life coaches and therapists that like to drag things on and leave you dangling on the carrot, I want to make sure that each and every single time that we meet and have a life coaching session together, that you never ever leave saying, man, that was a waste of time, or I didn't get the value that I desired. I am committed to making sure that each and every single time we meet, you are one step closer by the time we finish to a goal that you have in mind. So why should you work with me? Well, let me tell you, as I said, I'm committed to making sure that I provide value, that I provide something that's step by step and easy to follow. I'm also a fantastic listener. I've been blessed with the gift of listening and I love to listen to people, their stories, their, their dreams, their desires, because there's nothing more energetic and passionate to me than when a client gets their first desire or they get that goal or they hit that big target or whatever it might be. And also, as the trifecta, I am committed to you to helping you take action. So whether or not it be deciding on the university you want to go to, deciding on the course that you want to be at, helping you get excited and passionate about your work environment, whatever it might be, 
I am committed to helping that happen. I'm also committed, if you need to shed some pounds, if you need to gain some muscle mass, if you need to, I don't know, develop your self-esteem, I'm committed to helping you take action and following a step-by-step -step plan of action that we can put together. But now, folks, I want to tell you about the Early Bird Special Offer that we are launching right now. It is for 10 people and 10 people alone. That's right, if you are interested in having life coaching sessions with me one-on-one, -on -one, 10 people have the opportunity to do that and we're looking to help these people change their lives completely. We take ages 14 and upwards, so if you're interested in learning how to get from where you are to where you want to be, to do really develop that passion, to live a life that you enjoy as opposed to a life that you wake up and think, ah, oh, you know, how to develop and change your mindset from maybe a negative one to a positive one, understanding what fuels your mindset and understanding what creates the kind of life that you want to live, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. As I say, this is open only for 10 people and once it's done, it's done. So click that box below, get in touch, let's have a conversation backwards and forwards and see if we're a fit for each other and I look forward to working with you. Have an amazing day folks, take care, God bless and I will see you soon.